Hey, I know this one game popular, popular. But like follow when your light goes. Uh -huh. I know it's you, nothing impossible. Connected to my armor, bro. Shining like a light bulb. Ruma Mu Yahua. Barak Yahua. Who is Yahusha? Allah who ya, Ruma Mu Yahua. All this thing given unto Yahuwah, the ex exaltation unto our King, unto our Master, Barak Yahuwah. Shabbat Shalom, beloved family, to all the 12 tribes of Yasharal, and to even those who have been grafted in, you are now a part of Yasharal, Rumamu Yahuwah. And to those who are seeking truth, to those who are seeking understanding, to those who want to come out of the life of this pagan world and come into this truth of Yahuwah, of who the Creator truly is, of who we are. Welcome, welcome to each and every one of you, Barak Yahuwah. The word Abarit, it means to cross over, to cross over from the speaking world into biblical truth. That's what the word Abarit means, and that's who we are. We are Abarit. We are Abarit. We are persons who have crossed over. That's who Abarham is. That's why we got the name from his father or his grandfather, Abar. Eber, as they call it in the scripture. Eber, but his correct Abarit name would be Abar. So this is who we are as well. We have crossed over. Abarham did cross over. He crossed over from paganism, pagan idolatrous worship that his father was involved with. If you don't know, then go read. What we, this is something that we should all know. Those who are believers, for those who are unbelievers, you may not know this. But yes, the father of many nations, our righteous father, Abraham, or Abraham as they call him, he was also involved in pagan worship with his father. But it troubled him. And he started to seek the Mosai on this, started to, you know, question his father and, you know, talk against it. And one day he got rid of it, got rid of these idols and destroyed them. And then he started to seek the Mosai even deep, and the Mosai spoke to him and told him to leave his father's house. And that's how he obeyed, continued to listen to the voice of the Mosai. Mosai revealed itself to him and all these things that he obeyed and listened. And that's how he became the father of many nations, or as I call him, the father of Amuna, the father of trust, the father of true faith. He showed the Creator how much he trusted. In a lot of ways. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go read the story. You'll see how he was truly tested. Many people will talk about the testing of Job or Ayu, but many don't talk about the testing of Abraham, Abraham, as they call it. He was really tested as well. So go check it out and you understand more of what's happening today, of what's required of you when you come into this truth. It's not an easy road, it's not an easy path, but when you obey, when you obey, Obedience and Amunah, fear, trust, is the key to Yah's kingdom. You got to be and you got to trust him. There are going to be some tough times where you're going to have to make some really tough decisions, some tough choices, whether that be between your loved one, whether that be maybe a wife, a husband, a child, children, or family members job, something, you're going to have a tough choice to let go of. Uh, Barham had this tough choice. He had to walk away from his father and his brother and leave his own country. Did he obey? Go find out. Same thing with Ayu. He was tested this way with his family as well. So will you be like them or will you do the opposite? Because that's what the opposer always wants us to do. The opposer always wants us to do the opposite of what Yahuwah is telling us to do. And that's something that we don't understand about the enemy today. A lot don't understand. They don't understand how the enemy works, especially those who are involved in religion. doesn't matter what religion you're in. As long as you're in religion, whether that be Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, whatever it is, you are in religion. Yahuwah did not want to establish a religion. He wants... He wants a relationship. That's why he said many will come and say, Master, Master, I haven't died of this in your name, did this and, and yada, yada, yada. And he's going to say to them, get away from me. I know you not. What does that mean? He never knew you. He was not intimate with you. He had no relationship with you. You two did not know each other. You did not speak to him. 
it says in Genesis that Adam knew his wife, which means they had a relationship. That's what Yahuwah meant when he said, I don't know you. You're a stranger. I don't know who you are. You don't know me. We didn't talk. We didn't have a communication. If you know who I was, then you would keep my commandments. You would know who I am. And that's what we're trying to figure out in this episode, or trying to show, as a matter of fact, not figure out, but trying to show those who really want to learn who the Father, Yahuwah, truly is. As you see the title, Yahuwah is Yahusha, and this is part three. There's a part one to this, and there's a part two as well. In part two, our beloved um, brother, Aki Yashai, he did a teaching on this to show that Yahusha is the redeeming right hand of the Father, Yahuwah. It's not, he's not a twinity. He's not a trinity. As you can see on the screen, the principle of trinity is found in all the world's religion. So, so today, we'll try to get an understanding of this. The title, Yahuwah is Yahusha, part three. The foundations of truth. We're trying to get to the foundations of truth. What is the foundations of truth here, everyone? And what is the foundations of life? Who is the enemy? How does he work? Barak Yahuwah. But before we jump into this, definitely got to go to Yahuwah's throne. Definitely got to go to his feet in Palau, in petition, even though. As he taught us in Matthew 6, Rumamu Yahuwah, I will be doing that Palal in the pure tongue, the tongue of creation, according to Jubilee 6, no, Jubilee chapter 12, verse 26. Abarit is the tongue of creation, and that's quite proven, it's quite clear. We should all know this by now. The first covenant was written in Hebrew. The second covenant was also written in Hebrew, but they changed it to Greek. Why would they do that? Because they don't want us to speak in a pure tongue. They want us to use all these different languages to mislead us, to cause us to cast spells. A lot of times, most verses don't know certain words that we use are casting spells. That's why we need to do this teaching to get to the bottom of the truth, of the lies and all the nonsense that we have been told. Let's get to the bottom of it. Barak Yahuwah. So let's go to Yahuwah and Palal with Abinu Palal, our father's Palal. The operate tongue first, then I'll translate it in the English. Umamu Yahua, Allah Huya. Abinu, Ba Shamai, Kadashki Shamka, Malakutka, Bua, Ya Rauka, Asha, Al Arats Khan, Bashamai, Natan Lanu, Ayum, At, Laham, Wahazara. Usalah lanu lahatenu, ki lanu salah utam, lahata inkam kwara lanu, uparat lanu la taha, uyasha lanu ma rasha, la malakutka shula, haka u haka bad, rukata adanai alahimi yahua, laka alam, <laughs> umamu yahua, wahasham. Ba al kal shamut Yahuwah Yahusha Aman Mu Yahuwah. Our Father in heaven, separated is your name. Your kingdom come. Yah, your will be done or accomplished on earth. So it is in heaven right now. Give or distribute us the day covenant bread in the need. And forgive us for our crimes, Yahuwah as we forgive them for their crimes that they have done against us. Don't let us be as, let us stray by evil by who, and rescue us from evil doing. For your kingdom reigns, the power and the esteem. Exalted are you, Yahuwah, King of all, all ever, of all times. In the name above all names, Yahuwah, who is Yahusha, a man which means so be it. Let it be so. Umamu Yahuwah. It is so. Allah to Yah. Barak Yahuwah. All right. So let's jump into this breakdown, this teaching. Part three. Yahuwah is Yahusha. Part three. The foundations of truth. The foundation of truth 
understanding the foundation of truth. Now, why am I at this? It will seem a bit backwards to some people, right? Because they'll be like, why didn't you do this at, at part one? Like, I break down or brought, you know, the foundations. You would bring the foundations first. Yeah, in some cases, sometimes you'll do that. And in some cases, sometimes you may do it another way. That's however Yahoo wants you to, however he leads you to. So, Barak Yahuwah, sometimes you may not need to, depending on what the situation is, how the matter is dealt with, you may not need to. And in some cases, you may need to after. And in this case, we need to know. Now, understanding the foundations of truth, understanding Yahuwah, understanding the enemy, what's this all about? Remember, it's all about Yahuwah. What is the enemy trying to do? He's called what? The accuser and also the opposer. Always remember this term. He is the opposer. That's a part of his title. He opposes Yahuwah, which means he's going to tell you. He's, he's doing and he's going to tell you and everyone else to do the opposite of what he's sending you to do. This is what he did with the messengers when he got them filled with pride as well. He made them the, the, the opposite of what they should be doing. They should be esteeming Yahuwah. They should be working for Yahuwah, serving Yahuwah. But no, they're doing the opposite of that, serving someone else, which was who? Hashatan. Look at what he did with Adam and Hua in the garden. Yahuwah told him, Adam, the male, not to eat the fruits of the garden. Not only Adam, the male, but also his wife told them, but he told the man, he gave the man that command. He spoke to the man, the husband. The husband would have related this message to his wife, which is clear proof. So he told them not to eat this fruit in the garden, the forbidden fruit. The opposer came. What did he say? Oh, eat the fruit. This is what the enemy always does to us. If Yahuwah says go up, he's going to say go down. If Yahuwah says go to the right, he's going to say go to the left. If Yahuwah says pray, he's going to say don't pray. If Yahuwah says give, he's going to say don't give. If Yahuwah says be kind, he's going to say be mean. If Yahuwah says, keep my commandments, he's going to tell you, don't keep the commandments. It's that simple, everyone. But in order for you to know this, you got to gotta have the foundation. You got to understand the Father. And that's where a lot of persons don't understand the Father and who he is, his commandments and the foundations of truth. Why don't we have the foundations? Why is this happening? The problem is, why so many don't see or believe that Yahuwah is Yahusha? It all depends on the person's heart, really and truly. But why some are struggling is because you don't understand the foundations. You're not reading the foundations of Scripture. What is the foundations? The first covenant, the Torah and the prophets. Many persons start their reading in the renewed covenant. And you're also reading from English. You're reading solely in English. You're not even using the strongs to break down these these words because these words, as I originally said at first, the first covenant was written in Hebrew first. The renewed covenant, first covenant, renewed covenant are in the Abri tongue. They are called, first covenant is Barit Rashun. Seven, second covenant are the renewed covenant is called Barit Hadashah. But they changed the name and call them Old Testament, the New Testament. So given it that name, it's like, all right, all right, that's the old way. This is the new way of doing things. No, we don't do things the old way. Anymore. That's why a lot of persons in religion, especially Christianity, don't go to the Old Testament because they say that that's done away with it. And the name says it all. The title for it, Old Testament, New Testament. I'm doing things the new way, the New Testament. JC make all things new. And that's why they believe in grace and all these things and they don't keep the commandments anymore or search for the feast, search for the, the, the Shabbat days and all these things. Because of these simple, simple titles. But they're not simple. As I said, they are words of curse. They are putting a spell on a person's mind. 
Because with that understanding, if I tell you, oh, that's my old car. This is my new car. Now. What is that saying to you? Oh, that's my old car. I don't use that anymore. I don't drive it anymore. This is what I use now. This is my new car. That's what you're simply saying. That's what Yahusha even said in Galatians 2. Where, not Galatians rather, but Yahusha said this, where any man being Mashiach is a, well, and let's read it exact. Any man being Mashiach is a new creature. All things are passed away. But how we should read is, any man being a Mashiach, in the Messiah, is a renewed creature. But they keep on removing these words so that you don't understand the foundation. You don't have the old truth. They are tampering with the evidence. If you tamper with the evidence, you're going to have a misunderstanding of the whole fact, the whole truth. We have seen so many persons have been wrongly convicted because of tampering of evidence, tampering with the case and all these things. And persons have been sent to prison, sent to jail, and all these things for tampering of evidence because the judge and the jury are not seeing the entire case. They're not seeing the entire truth. They only have pieces of the truth. Why have this person been wrongly accused? Because whosoever tampered with the evidence wants to make it seem as if the person is guilty. So by tampering with the evidence, that's what you can do. You can make the person who should be innocent, based on the evidence, should be proven and shown that he is innocent, he or she is innocent. But by tampering with evidence, it makes it seem as if, wait, something is missing. Here. You're telling some lies here. There's not enough proof, not enough evidence. So you know what? We're going to find you guilty. So many have been sent to prison that way. So this is what's happening today. That's what they did. They removed Yah's name from the scriptures, from the Bible. That's the first, well, not the first thing that they did. First thing that they did was what? Change it from being Hebrew to Greek, then to Latin, then to English. Then after they did all these things, guess what they did next? They removed his name. Go check it out for yourself, especially those in religion. The title, Lord, the Lord, our Lord, is used over 7,000 times in the Bible. If you should click on Lord and see what is the Hebrew word for it, it will show you, the, as they call it, the tetragrammaton. That's what they call it. Because, they again, they're trying to don't play Yahuwah. They're trying to don't play his name. They're trying to make it seem, oh, it's just another title, whatever the case may be, but it's not. So if you click on it, you'll see the tetragrammaton, as they call it. The Y-H-W-H, but it should not be a W, it should be a U, because there's no W in the Hebrew. But you'll see that, which his name is Yahuwah. So this means in the original tongue, in the original scriptures, the name Yahuwah, that tetragrammaton, as they call it, was used over 7,000 times in the Bible. Why did they change it? Where in the Bible did the most I give permission to any man or any messenger, as a matter of fact, any messenger, any spirits, any power to tamper with his name? Why would he change his name? If he wants to have a relationship with us, why would he hide from us, hide who he is? If you want to have a relationship with someone, the first thing that you're going to do is what? introduce yourself hi hi how are you wow hi how are you uh my name is such and such and you are the first thing that you do is exchange names when he cried out to most of these righteous ancestors and they said master they was answered and he will say abarham abarham or abraham Hiram. and he said here am i and then they will ask what who are thou? Who are you? And then he will tell them, I am he. I am Yahuwah. Remember, this happened with Masha. When Masha was sent to the children of Yasharal, when they were in Mitzrayim. And he asked, who should I say to them that has sent me? Then we know in Exodus 3, 14, it says, Ahaya Asha, Ahaya, 
and I'm going to show you the word Ahaya and show you that the name Yah is also in Ahaya. So when he said Ahaya, I'm going to show you what he was saying. I think I did this already, but I'm just going to show it again. So you can see it for yourself and get this understanding. Now he says Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. Now the English, the Greeks, they translate that to being I am who I who I am, whatever. I am he who exists. I am the existing one, yada, 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 all that nonsense. But that's not what it should be. But anyways, move on to verse 15. I'll break down the Ahaya, Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. I'll break that down short. But anyways, move on to verse 15. Then he goes on to say, say this, telling that Yahuwah, the Allah, the mighty one of Abarham, the mighty one of Yatasab, Isaac, the mighty one of Jacob, Jacob, has sent me unto you. He declared his name. We saw this in, in several places where persons who were not sure who was speaking, the voice was, he had to identify himself. So that's the first thing you do when meeting someone. If you want to have a connection or relationship with a person, you introduce your name. And then you tell them about yourself. I am sorry. I'm a father. I'm a this. I'm a that. You tell them about yourself. Some things that you do. Yada, 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 yada. That's how you get to have a relationship with someone. Whether that be a friendship or an intimate relationship, you introduce yourself. No, when you look at the scriptures, first thing that they did was did what? They tampered with the written word. They removed it from being Hebrew to English, and then they will use it like, oh, because we're an English-speaking nation, we wouldn't understand and all that stuff. But that's the lie that they use. By doing that, they're tampering with the evidence. They're tampering with the truth. It's best if it was laid or left in Hebrew then we have to seek a translator to help us understand. Or we had to go to schools, or we had to learn, but they did not want us to learn. Why? They had a reason why they did not teach us true Hebrew, true Aborit. Not that so-called Hebrew that they used down there in that, in that faith land, faith nation, but true Hebrew. And even that Hebrew is not even taught in schools unless you get to a certain grade and you may select it as a language or whatever, you may pursue it after but even that is not even taught. Why are they keeping these things away from us? If the scriptures were originally written, especially the first covenant, if it was originally written in Hebrew, then we should have learned Hebrew. Why? So we can truly understand what he was saying. But they didn't. So they changed the written word. Then not only did they change the written word, but they removed his name and replaced it with this title, the Lord. If you look up the Lord in the Hebrew, you'll see it as Bahal. In, in a bad way, you'll see it as Bahal. In another understanding, in another way, it could also be Adonai or Adonai, which means master. So they could have chosen to put the word master there. They could have removed his name and put the master. But why did they put the Lord? Because they're trying to get you not to know his name. Because they don't want you to call upon it. There's a reason. No, as I said, the enemy, he's the opposer. As you can see here on the screen, this is speaking tree that I end. It says that the principle of Trinity is found in all the world's religion. Which means every religion out there today believe in the Trinity or the Trinity. Every religion out there today believes in this. It says that the Sianity H Trinity is seen as G-O-D the Father, G-O-D the Spirit, G-O-D the Son, or C-H-R-I-S-D the Contents. And if you go on to read it, it says within the Sianity teaching or teachings, the eighth trinity is worshipped through a number of rituals. It's worshipped through a number of rituals that is practiced today. Worship and praise are offered through geo are offered to G-O-D, they say, through J-C in the eighth spirit. Blessings, as they would say, blessings. We know what the word blessings mean. Blessings mean to sprinkle blood on a pagan altar. Blessings and baptisms 
are given in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Eighth Spirit. Prayers are given to all, to three in one. They said, G, esteem be to the Father and to the Son and to the H Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is no and ever shall be. Where we do end, Amen. We know this ending. We know these things. This is true. This is what we were taught in Christianity. If you're not from Christianity and you're from another re religion, then you would know that in your religion, most believe in this Trinity as well. They believe in the Trinity are multiple mighty ones. If you go on to continue scrolling to the page, you can do this in your own time as well. I'm not going to go through all of it. The doctrine of Christianity Trinity resembles the Hindu, the Brahman, and all these other ones. As you can see, the Hindu one where you got three. The three major Hindu mighty ones are Dash, Dash, and Dash. Creation, the creator, sustenance, and destroyer. Destroyer would be this name. So if you go to and read this, you will see this and understand it. I know that this was also other trinities. It was also found where? Where, everyone? In Egypt, in Greek, in, Babyl in Babylon. So in the Egyptian times, they believed in a trinity as well, which we know that's true. The Egyptians believed in a trinity. They believed in a father, in a son, and a mother. The Greeks, the same thing. Babylonia, same thing. So as you can see, and this is the trinity, this is a symbol of trinity. Wherever you see this, they're, 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 they believe in the Trinity. This is a Trinity symbol. So if you search it out, you will find out that this Trinity is really believed in all the worlds. Now, they have given this a name or a title. They call it polytheism, which is the belief in many mighty ones. Polytheism characterizes virtually all religions, but they say other than Judaism, Christianity, and Islam which share a common tradition of monotheism, the belief in one mighty. No, I'm going to get, no, you can read this on your own to understand more about polytheism, you know, the worship, the belief of many mighty ones. Now let's, let's get an understanding of what monotheism is. It says that it's a belief in the existence of one mighty one or in the oneness of a mighty one. As such, it is distinguished from polytheism, the belief in the existence of many mighty ones. And from atheism, you know, the belief there is no um, mighty one. And from agnosticism, agnosticism, the belief that the existence or non-existence of a mighty one or of mighty ones is unknown or unknowable. So the other said this monotheism is characterizing the traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The minimalist belief and yada, yada, yada. You can read this on your own and all that stuff. Now here we got ISIS, -S, nursing, H-O-R-U-S. Right here. This is a depiction of it. So they believe in one mighty one. Now is that true? Does Christianity truly believe that JC is Yahuwah, or JC is the father. Do, do they really believe that the Messiah, because I'm not going to say JC, do they really believe that the Messiah is the creator, the father, and that the spirit is the creator, the father, the father is the spirit, all these things? Let's find out. No, this is another symbol that is used in Christianity, And this is what they told us, they taught us. They kind of believe it, but don't believe it fully. Why? Because Christianity, all these religions have a bit of a stem in, of a bit of a trace from the truth. Remember, Hashatan cannot cre really create anything. He just twists what Yahuwah says or twists Yahuwah's creation and makes it there, his own. So if you follow the footsteps of the lies, you'll get to the truth. All you got to do is investigate. Someone is telling you a lie. You're not sure if this person is telling you the truth or not. You got to do what? You got to step back. You got to trace back. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Trace your steps or trace the person's steps. Retrace the person's steps so that you can come back to the truth. All right, let's follow him from the night of the shooting. Let's, let's follow him before this took place. Let's watch the video cameras. Let's see where he was before 
trace back all so we can get back to the beginning. That's how you'll know if the person is telling the, the truth or not. You got to investigate properly. So if you truly investigate properly, these religions are stemmed from somewhere. They are a twisted version of something of the truth. They are a twisted version. Religion is the twisted version of the truth. What is that truth? That's what we need to get to. That's what we're getting to today, the foundation of truth. Now, here in Christianity, this is one of the symbols that I've seen and I've heard about. Again, this is still the Trinity, but in a different shape. They said that the Father is G-O-D, the Son is G-O-D, the Spirit is G-O-D. G-O-D is the Father, G-O-D is the Son, G-O-D is the Spirit. But listen to this, it's not complete. As you can see, there is a is not. No, even though they believe the Father is G-O-D, G-O-D is the Son, G-O-D is the Spirit, the Spirit is G-O-D, the Son is G-O-D. But they said the Father is not the Son, the Father is not the Spirit, the Son is not the Father, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father, the Spirit is not the Son. This makes no sense. This is confusion already. Because how can GOB be the Father? How can GOB be the Son? But how can the Father not be the Son and the Son not be the Spirit? Like, this doesn't make no sense whatsoever. This is confusion. Remember, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, Yahusha said, it is not the author of confusion. So that means someone else is called. Someone else gave us. Who could that be? One is but one person, the opposer. Again, Yahuwah says go up, he's going to say go down. Yahuwah says he's one, he's going to say he's two, he's three, he's five, he's ten, he's fifteen. The thing is, Hashatan will always tell you not what Yahuwah is telling you. If Yahuwah says one, Hashatan will tell you any other number but one. He will never tell you one. Yes, he's one. I will never say one. He will say two. He will say three. He will say one and a half. He will say 1.2. He will come close to saying one, but he will still not say one because he cannot agree with Yahuwah. He, otherwise, he could not be the opposer. He could not be the accuser. He could not be the enemy. If he agrees with Yahuwah, how can he agree with Yahuwah and deceive us? How can he be the deceiver if he's agreeing to Yahuwah? Think about it, everyone. So as you can see, this is their nonsense that they believe in. And this is the energy. Now, if you look at all these images, here you have the Egyptians, here we got the, the, the Hindus, and we got some more from Sianity. This is another one as well. If you study this, this is from Sianity as well. What is the Trinity? Here you got the the Father, they say, the Son, and then the Age Spirit. As you can see, in every religion, they're showing you more than one mighty ones, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So as you can see, Christianity does believe this, but they're trying to make it seem as if they don't really believe they're separate, but they do believe they're separate. Because if you should, if you should ask someone in Christianity, do you believe JC is the same as the Father or the Father? They will say maybe yes, but in a way, no, at the same time. They will say yes and no at the same time. Your answer can't be yes and no. Yahuwah says you can't serve two masters at the same time. You got to have one. If it's yes, let your answer be yeah, and let your answer be nay. It can't be both, either or either. It's either you love Yahuwah or you don't. It's either you love the world or you don't. So how can your answer be, yes, I believe, and at the same time, no, I don't believe? You're double-minded. You're confused. That's what you are. So some will tell you, no, they don't believe. Straight up, they will tell you, no, JC is separate. He's the son. And here's why I'll show you proof that many people believe this. Even in this walk, when we share this, that Yahuwah is Yahusha, many will come at us and say, so what are you saying? Are you saying that that that, that Yahusha prayed to himself? Are you saying that who did Yahusha pray to? Who did Yahusha pray to in, 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 in John 17? When he prayed to his father and all these things, who did he pray to? Did he pray to himself? And when he was on the stick, on the tree, what did he say? He says, my all, my all, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? The problem for this is because you are reading from the renewed covenant. 
you are reading from a state of mind that doesn't have a foundation, that doesn't understand the foundations of truth first. Many of you have started in the Renew Covenant and not in the First Covenant. Many of you have read most of your books and have your belief built on by the Renew Covenant, especially in the English tongue or in the English, because that was the original name of this English language that we speak today. The original name was called English because it was from the Anglo-Saxon. And if you should truly hear English in its original tongue, <laughs> You would be surprised. This sounds like witchcraft. Because it is witchcraft. It is sorcery. It sounds horrible. It sounds disgusting. It sounds confusing. But again, most don't study. Most don't research. You are reading this understanding from the Renew Covenant books. And this is why today many are rejecting the Renew Covenant. Because the Renew Covenant makes it seem, well, I'm not going to say the Renew Covenant. The translators made it seem as if Yahusha is a separate being from the Father. Especially when you read places like in John 17, as I mentioned, when he prayed, and it's making it seem as if he's praying, he's a separate being praying to another person. Or in when he was saying, uh, Ali, Ali, Lama Hasbatani or in the E word or whatever they want to use. And it says, my all, my all, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me and all these things? Again, you don't understand the, the, the Hebrew because Ali, Ali, the word Al is not the Hebrew word for father. So it could never be my father. You would know this if you had studied your tongue, if you had studied your father's true language. Many people will say, oh, it doesn't matter. We're an English-speaking country. We're an English-speaking nation. We're English-speaking people. The Father has to speak to us. The Father, we speak to him and he understands us. So everyone is like, oh, so he got to understand us. We don't have to understand him. That's what you're saying. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's Hebrew or, or whatever. It's Greek or English today. Um, we speak English, so he understands us. When I pray, he answers I've seen him. I've seen miracle signs and wonders done in JC's name. Didn't the Messiah also told us that signs and wonders are going to follow the false one? If you read 2 Thessalonians 2, read Revelation, it says that the beast, the false one, is going to do a lot of powerful signs and wonders. And there's also another part in Matthew where the Messiah said this. He says that the signs and wonders that he's going to perform are going to be so strong and so convincing that if it if it was possible, even his chosen, the elect, would have been deceived by these signs and wonders, by these miracles and all these things. So you're seeking after a sign then. You're looking for a sign. And what did the Messiah said about those who seek after a sign? He says only a wicked and adulterous nation or perverse nation seeks after a sign. If you want to see a sign to believe in, you're looking for the, you are seeking after the wrong thing. So that's why you will see many signs and wonders done in JC's name. You can, many persons can come right now and say, oh, I've seen signs and wonders done in, in, in the B name or the, 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 the V name or their mighty ones um, name. Many will come right now. You will hear Indians, you will hear Chinese that they have seen miracle signs and wonders done in the name that they pray to, to their mighty one. So wait, so everyone mighty one can do signs and wonders? But the thing is that you need to ask, which one can deliver? Because only one, only one's name truly means deliverance. In Matthew 1, 21, Yahuwah, the Most High, gave the messenger a command to give to who? Miriam, or as they falsely call her, Mary, the mother who was impregnated by the, 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 the spirit, the Kaldo spirit, the Ruach Adash, they, the messenger, give them a name. And they, it said that they shall call the child this. The child shall be called this name. Why was the child given this name? What did the name mean? The name had a meaning. Just like the name Yahuhanan, the Hebrew name for John, 
John really has no meaning other from what English people give it. His Hebrew name, because he was Hebrew, his Hebrew name was Yahu Hanan. Hanan is the Hebrew word for favor. So Yahu Hanan means Yah adds favor. Yasha Yahu, deliverance is added of Yah. Yaram Yahu, exaltation is added of Yah. Yaram Yahu is who you would know as Jeremiah. Yasha Yahu is who you would know as Isaiah. So not only did they change the Mosai name, but they also changed the name of even the prophets, even the people in the scriptures, they changed their name. I mean, look, for instance, they changed the name from Abarham to Abraham because they don't want you to look at what Abar really means. That's why they say we are Abarit. He crossed over. So did we. And Abar, Ab, Abba, means father. Remember, Yahuwah says he shall be called the father of many nations. So that's what he. That's why his name was changed from Abram, Abram to Abarham. Father of many nations. Well, you would not know this because you did not properly research. So they changed these names. So he was given a name. And it says that his name, the meaning or the reason for this name is because he shall redeem his people from their crimes, from their transgressions. Not S-A-V-E. That name is tied to a, a pagan mighty one. Not S-A-V-E. But he shall redeem or deliver his people from their crimes to their transgression. So this name should mean something with deliverance. Just as how Yah adds favor, Yahuwah Nan John, he was favored by Yahuwah. So that's why he was given the name Yahuwah Nan. Yah added favor to his life. Yaram Yahu Jeremiah, he exalted Yahuwah. Yah added exaltation in his life. Yasha Yahu Isaiah, Yah added deliverance in his time. All these names were given for the purpose what Yahuwah did in that time or what Yahuwah did for these people. That's why they were given this name or they chose these names. Just like Leah, Rachel and Leah. You guys remember the story of Rachel and Leah? If you notice, each time Leah had a child, she gave that child a specific name for what Yah did in that time or what happened to her in that time. Go read the story of Leah and Rachel and read when she had children. Notice that she gives a specific name for what took place. That's the understanding. That's the foundation of name. That's the foundation of truth. No, the Messiah was given a specific name. That name could never be B-R-A-H-M-A. -A. It could never be V-I-S-H-N-A whatever, any of those names, J-E-S-U-S, J-C, whatever, especially J-C, J-E-S-U-S-Y, because the letter J is only less than 500 years old. The letter J is 500 years old. Put it that so you can better understand. The letter J was only created 500 years ago. The Messiah walked the earth over 2,000 years ago. So how could a man that walked the earth over 2,000 years ago before the letter J was even created or existed, how could he have been given a name J-E-S-U-S -S, when there was no J in that time? Now, if you search the history or the, the etymology of it, or if you use the Strong's, it will tell you that his name is from Hebrew, which is they will put Yahoshua or Yahushua or whatever they will put there. But they will put it that it was from Hebrew, then changed to Greek, which is the I-E-S-O-U-S, -S, then changed to the Latin, which is the I-E-S-U-S, -S, then changed to the English slash Germanic name, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Why did they change his name? Why did they change the Messiah's name? Again, the name was given for a specific reason. His name, Yahusha, the name Yahusha means Yah adds deliverance. Yah is deliverance. The Hebrew word for deliverance or redemption or to deliver, to redeem. The Hebrew word for this is Yasha. Yasha. Thus as the prophet's name Isaiah, Yasha Yahu, deliverance is of Yah. 
Yahusha. Yasha Yahu, turn it around, put it together, you get Yahusha. Yahu plus Yasha equals Yahusha, which means Yah add deliverance. Yah is delivered. And we're going to get into some scriptures that shows us this. And I'm going to show you foundational scriptures, meaning I'm going to show you scriptures that are not in the renewed covenant that says this, but it's going to be in the first covenant, the Old Testament, as they call it that clearly shows that Yahuwah says, he, no one else, not even his son, as many will see, he said that he would deliver his people from their crime. He is their deliverer. And I'm going to show you scriptural proof to this. So the problem is today, many people are too reliant on what they see in English. You are to focus on the reading of English Bible. The English Bible reads it that way, but the Hebrew scriptures does not read that way. If you understand Hebrew and look at this name in the Hebrew tongue, you will not see that Yahusha is a separate being. You will see that Yahusha is Yahuwah. If you should study Hebrew and look at the Hebrew letters and understand what the names mean and break down the names, it will only lead you back to one person. And I'm going to do that. It's going to lead you back to one person. It's going to lead you back to Yahoo. Because again, as I said, Yaram Yahoo, exaltation is added by Yah. Yah, you keep on hearing the name Yah, Yah, Yah. Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. Yaram Yahoo. Yasha Yahoo. Yahoo Anan. Yahoo Sha. You keep hearing Yah, 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 Yah. Because that's his name. Yah. His name is Yah. Y-A-H. Yahoo means Yah adds. Yahuwah. I'm going to show you what Yahuwah means. And I'm going to show you what Yahusha means. So you can know that it's still the same person. Nothing changed. With scriptural proof. So in order to understand the foundation, you got to go back to Torah. You got to go back to the first scriptures, the first books, rather. And this is why so many today are rejecting the renewed covenant because the renewed covenant has been mistranslated in some places purposefully to lead people astray to deceive persons, to believe in the pagan trinity because the trinity is pagan nowhere in the scriptures. Can anyone show me where the Trinity is mentioned? Nowhere in the scriptures can you show me. Even if you want to use the Renewed Covenant, it's still not showing the Trinity. The Trinity is pagan. It's a world belief system. That's why you see so many religions practice this. Listen, a key way to identify something is wrong, look if the Word is doing it. That's the easiest way to see if you're, if you're like the Word. The world does what Yahuwah, what Hashatan tells them to do. The world loves what Hashatan gives them. So if the world is involved in it, is, is engulfing it, that means it's wrong. The same way the world loves this, these pagan um, holidays like Xmas, Halloween, E-A-S-T-E-R, celebrating birthdays and all these things, doing what they will. The world does this. Do we read the people in the scriptures doing these things? No. This is how easily you can identify something is wrong. Look at what the righteous people in the Bible did. Did they do these things? If they did not, then that means it's not from the Creator. It's not from the Mosai. It's definitely from the enemy, the opposer, the accuser, the deceiver, the devil. If the world is doing it, it's not of Yahuwah. It's that simple. It's that easy to identify. They did not taught us this in religion. Why? Because they did not want us to know how much you are in the world, how much are, are most religion, all religions still involved in the world. Yes, some denominations will believe that the Father is the Spirit, the Spirit is the Father and all that stuff, but still they are missing out on some things. The same way some denominations like Seventh-day Adventists they don't believe in this white image that it's, it's the Messiah. They don't believe this is the Messiah. They, when they read in the scriptures, it clearly tells 
that his hair was white like wool. He had woolly hair, not long hair. And his feet were like they were burnt like brass, which means it was dark. Anything that's burned always come out dark, black. So based on what they gave us today, they gave us this white image of this white guy, this European dude. But when you read the Bible, the scriptures, that's not the description of how he looks. So yes, like the Seventh Day Adventists, they will get the Shabbat day correct and and the image thing correct, but they still use the name JC. They still use a false name. So if you get what I'm saying, some people will have some bit of the truth, but they don't have the whole truth because they are not properly researching the entire thing. They're not searching out the entire scriptures. So let's move away from the speak and belief. Let's go into some scriptures. Let's go into some understanding of truth. Then we'll go into the breakdown of the name. And I'll show you this understanding. Sorry, Allah. So let's go to John. And this is another place, again, where a lot of misconceptions, you know, started, birded. John 1, verse 1. Or Yahuhanan, as you can see in the top right hand corner, Yahuhanan, they put an O there, it should have been an A because there is no O in the Aubrey. Yahuhanan, Yah adds favor. It reads, verse 1, I'm not going to read it exactly. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Allah. And the word was Allah. And the same was in the beginning with Allah. And all things were made by him. And without him, nothing was made. Nothing would have been possible. Everything that was made as created today was created by him. Now, if you read this, if you only start right here, then you say, well, there it is. John 1 verse 1 says that he was with Yahuwah. So you see, he was with him. Like it means... Like my wife was with me at, at the supermarket. We shopped together. We were there together. She was by my side. But if you continue to read, it says that the word was Yahoo. The same was in the beginning with Yahoo, it says. And all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So he is the creator. He made all things. Now, if you continue to read and you're saying, wait, all things were made by him? Wait, something's not clear here. Because in Genesis, it did not say the sun created the heavens and the earth. Who did it say that created the heavens and the earth again? Because right here is a mistranslation. should not be with. In the beginning was the word, and the word was an emanation of Yahuwah, which means a source. So it's like a light from a flashlight. It's like ice from water. It's like steam from water. Is it another water? No, it's the same water. It's just a source. It's just a function that's coming from the source. It's just an ability coming from the source. So, but this part should stand out the most to you right here. All things were made by him. Mark this. Highlight this. Let me give it another color so you can remember. Highlight this verse, verse 3. Everything was made by him. Now let's continue to read. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. Let's go down a bit to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Did not say them. It says him, one person. Did not say them. Both of them do not add to the scripture. It clearly says him. It's speaking about one person. Him who? Let's find out. The, he was in the world and the word was created. Made by him, this person. But the world knew him not. The world didn't even know it was him, the creator. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Wow, how did they not receive him? But as many as received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of Yahuwah, even to them that believed on his name. 
And the word was made flesh and tabernacled among us, and we beheld his esteem, the esteem of his of the Yahid, uh, as of the Yahid of the Father, full of grace, or favor and truth. Whoa, this is saying a lot, right? This is saying a lot right here. So who is this him? Who created the heavens and the earth? Who created everything? The only way can you know this if it's the, if you got to go back to foundation. You got to go back to where? Barashid, which means in beginning, as they wrongly call it, Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 1. Now it says, in the beginning, similar to John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was Alua, or Yahuwah. You can say Alua or Yahuwah. In the beginning, rather, Alua or Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth. No, this says in the beginning, Alua or Allahim created the heavens and the earth. The same way John says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Allahim or Alua. And the word was Allahim, Alua. No, which this says this is not making sense. Because I'm reading where it says in the beginning, Allahim created the heaven and the earth. But in John, it was saying something else, unless we were not understanding what they were saying. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Ru Alua, or the Ru of Yahuwah, moved upon the face of the waters. And Alua, Allahim, Yahuwah said, Let there be light, and there was light. And Allahim, Yahuwah, saw the light that it was tube, it was okay. And Yahuwah divided the light from the darkness. And Yahuwah called the light daylight or bakar. And the darkness he called Lila night. And the evening and morning were first day. No, it clearly says that Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth, not his son. Yahuwah did this. The world was made by him. He was in the world. How and when was he in the world? When he came on earth as Yahusha. He was in the world, on the world, walking as a regular man. And so many did not know or understand how is it possible for Yahuwah to be on earth and in heaven at the same time. That's why, and it's still happening today. Nothing is new under the sun. So many persons cannot understand how could Yahuwah be sitting on his throne in heaven and at the same time walk on earth. The reason why you don't understand this is because you are limiting the power of Yahuwah. You have been deceived by Hashatan to put Yahuwah in a box, a thing where Yahuwah can't do this. Remember there's this title that we use. Yahuwah is omnipresent. Yahuwah is Omnis omniscient, omnipotent, and all these words that we would use. What does these words mean? He is all knowing, he is everywhere, and he's all powerful. In Psalms, I guess Psalm 62, verse 8, I believe it should be, where it says, Yah has spoken once, twice have I heard that all power belongs unto Yahuwah. Yahuwah says he's the king of kings. And he's the master of all masters. He's also the power of all powers. Which means, again, it ties back to being all powerful. How can you say that he's all powerful, he's all knowing, and he's all existent? Meaning he can be in multiple places at the same time. But yet to find it so hard to see or believe that Yahuwah walked the earth while he was still sitting on his throne. You are limiting the power. Of Yahuwah. Yahuwah says, and that means you will not believe this scripture then. You don't believe this scripture then. Yahuwah says, where two or more are gathered touching anything concerning my name, he is in the midst. No, I'm all the way right now in Jamaica with my wife and some other Mishbakas. We got some Mishbakas that are in America, we got some in Canada, and there are different persons all over the world. But I'm talking about those who fellowship with us now. I'm here in Jamaica. 
You guys are in your own country, different parts of the world. And at the same time, we are all listening this, watching this video, calling up on the name, praising the name Yahuwah. He is in the room with me and my wife right now. He is in the room with you. He is in the car room, wherever with you, watching this video at the same time. How is that possible? Unless you don't believe that scripture, he says, where two or more gather in his name, he is in your midst. Unless you don't believe that scripture, then. that's what you're trying to say. But that was said in the renewed covenant. One may say, oh, that was said in the renewed covenant. But I'm going to show you that that did not only happen in the renewed covenant. It also happened in the first covenant. In Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, when you pass through the fires, he will be with you. When you walk through the waters, he said he will be with you unto the ends of the earth. So it, it's not only in the new covenant. That was not someone that, that wasn't the Greeks that put that part there. That's in the Torah. That's in the prophets. That Yahuwah will always be with us while still in heaven. So you are limiting the power of Yahuwah. I mean, look at the earth. Look at how the earth was made. The, the air that we breathe, we can't even see the air. So are you saying the air is not real then? This is a deception by the enemy because you don't understand scriptures. How could he pray to himself? All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's talk about this part. When he said, um, Ali, Ali, Lama's Batani, or, or whatever he said, and he says, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because in the English, again, that's what was written. Let's go, dear. Rock your hook. Because I, I, I love showing proof. I love showing scriptural proof. I don't want anyone to think I'm speaking my own words. I'm showing you scriptures. Matthew chapter 27. Let's go down. This was the day that he was um, crucified. And he was nailed to the stake. Rock Yahuwah. Here it is. Um, here it is. Uh, I should have did this in the KJV because the SFR won't show it like that. But still, here we have it. And it's Matthew 27, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Yahusha cried with a loud voice saying, it says the E word, but there's no E or I in the operate. It would be Eli, Eli. But there's no E, I, there's no V in the object. So the E would be an A. This I would not be here. This is a Y because the Y makes an I flow. If it's not the first letter, it makes, if it's the first letter, it makes a Ya song. But if it's not the first letter, if it's the second, third, or last letter, it makes an I song. So this would be Ali, 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 Al, Al, Ali, Lama, Haz, Ba. This would be a B. Has, 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 batani. That is to say, my al, my al, why have you forsaken me? That's what they said. Now let's see if we can find this in the KJV and let's see what the reading is. Let me find this quickly. Bear with me and I'm going to show you. This is the misconception regarding the scriptures because the scriptures weren't properly translated in some places. Why? Because the enemy is trying to throw you off. The enemy is trying to deceive you. Now here it is. I'm um, still reading from the T. Sorry about that. Let me change it to KJV, King James Version. All right, go back. All right, go up a bit. All right, here it is. So, now about the ninth hour, they said that Dash cried with a loud voice saying, and you see you got the E word again, the I, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabach, Tani. That is to say, this is what they placed there. Dash, Dash, why hast thou forsaken? Is this correct? Again, that's not correct because Al does not translate to being G O D. We already know what G O D is. G O D is G A D, the pagan mighty one, the Babylonian mighty one of fortune, of money. 
So it would not be that. So right here, it says, my all, my all, why have you forsaken me? Was this what Yahusha said? First of all, let's break down the word all. The word all is the Hebrew word for strong authority. Strong authority. The yad on it, because there they have the my. Where did that my come from? When the Y, the Hebrew letter for Y is called a yad. You want to learn more about this? Go check out the Hebrew teaching that I did on the channel. Breaking down the Hebrew letters, their names, their pronunciations, and their meaning. And then you understand a lot more. If you truly want to understand truth, do you truly want to get the foundations of truth? Go check that out. Go learn. I'm not telling you to go speak Hebrew fluently. You don't have to. I don't speak it very fluently as I would, as I would love to, like 100% straight, pure if I wanted to. I'm still learning, I'm still great. I can read it though, can write it and all the stuff, but can't speak it 100% yet, still learning. So I'm not saying to you, you need to, you have to, because I don't, but I understand it. I understand the basics and the foundations of it. And then understanding, researching it and putting it together, it makes a lot of sense. It's more clearer. Now, as I said, the Ali part, the Y at the end, would be called the Yad or the Yod. It's a picture of an stretched out arm, arm and hand. When it's at the ending of any word or name, it's saying my. Just like the name Malachi. Malachi. M A Lama, the English letter that looks like a hockey stick. A C H, they put an I there, but again, it would not be an I, it would be a Y. Malachi or Malachi. In the Hebrew, it will be spelled this way M A Lama, or the English letter that looks like a hockey stick. A K Y. Malach is the Hebrew word, depending on which of the A's you use, or depending if you use an uh, if you use an ayin, one ayin from Allah, it means messenger. If you don't use any ayin, no a's, just ma'im or the mam, the lamad and the kaf, it's for king, malak, king. Malak with the ayin, messenger. So malaki, the yod, the y at the end makes it personal, make it your belong. So it's not just messenger, as you can see on the screen, my al. It makes it my messenger. So Ali, Al, will be Al by itself, but the Yod makes it my. So the Yod makes it my Al, my Al. But still, we don't know what Al means. Now, as I said, Al means strong authority or power. Power. In the concrete definition, it will be strong authority because the first letter is an ox head. It's the A, which means strength. Or because of the strength or the strongness of the ox, or also power of the ox. The Lamad, the English letter that looks like a hockey stick, this one right here, whenever I say Lamad or the hockey stick, this is the one that I'm talking about. This letter is called the Lamad, which is the shepherd staff in the pictographic Hebrew. This means authority, because that's what a shepherd has. He has authority over his sheep. And he will use the authority of the shepherd to keep his sheep in line and all these things. So put these two together, the strong, the ox strong, and the authority, you got strong authority. Strong authority are another word that we can use for this is power. So if you should read this properly now and break it down, it's saying my strong authority, my power, my power. So right there, you're seeing already the misconceptions of it, the wrong translation. Now, the Lama has batani. Why have you forsaken? Is that correct? No, that's not correct also. That's not he, what he was saying. He did not say, why have you forsaken? He said, my power. Why would he, why would he, why would he say that to his power? Why would his power forsake him? Why would Yahuwah's own power just get up and leave him without permission? Like, does that make sense to anyone think about it? 
Can Yahuwah power? Can Yahuwah's power does do as it please? Can Yahuwah's spirit power does operate as it as it chooses, or does it has to get permission from Yahuwah to do it? In the beginning, Yahuwah created the heaven and the earth, and Yahuwah says, "Let there be light," and His power obeyed and moved. So why? Think about it, everyone. Look at how they're downplaying Yahuwah or Yahusha. His power got scared and left. Oh, come on. This is silly. That's not what he said, everyone. He gave his power authority to leave, his strong authority permission to leave. He said, my power, my power, you leave me. Because remember, as Batani is on it, which is a why it should not be me. It should not be me. Remember, it's my, my power, my power, you leave me. But well, it's still personal, so it can be me, it can be my, so it's still saying him, it's making it personal. So he's telling his power, he's giving his power permission to leave his body. Remember, Yahuwah says, I have life, I take it my own life, I lay it down, and I rise it back up. Hashatan does not have that authority, everyone. To kill you or to tell you when you're going to die or to kill Yahuwah. Only Yahuwah has that authority. So why would his power suddenly got scared and just for abandon him, forsaken him? Ali, Ali, Lama has Batani. My power, my power, you leave me. Go. He's telling his power, his spirit to leave. So that the body the fleshy body could die. He commanded his soul, his being, to come out of the body. The spirit, the power to come out of the body so that he can fulfill what he came to do, to die for his people, to shed his own blood, to become his own lamb. He did not require that of any man. Remember, he wanted, he commanded Abraham to do that with Yathasa, just to test him. And what did Abraham say to, 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 to his son? His son says, I see the altar, I see the knife, I see the burnt wood, but I don't see the lamb. And what did Abraham say? Yahuwah shall provide himself a burnt a lamb. Yahuwah shall make himself provide for himself a lamb. He will provide for himself a lamb. He will literally make himself a lamb by using a part of his body. It's that simple. It's that powerful. Many will also say that Yahuwah, are you trying to say that you're also, you're don't playing Yahuwah, you're don't playing Yahusha. Are you trying to say he come in the mere image and, and, and mere being of a man? No, he did not come in the mere image or mere being of a man. He came in the image and being of himself. Don't do the opposite. You're making this the opposite. Let us make man in our image. Let's go back again to creation. Genesis 2. And let's go down. And let's read. Barak Yahuwah. Man, Rumambu Yahuwah. You know what? Let's go back to Genesis 1. Go all the way down. Rumambu Yahuwah. And let's let's read and get the understanding of this. And let's this there here it is. Again, foundation. Genesis chapter one verse twenty six. And Yahuwah said, or Allah said, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cat, and over all." All the earth and over every creeping things on from the earth, all that stuff. So he said, Let us make man in ours. So he did not come in man's image. He came in his own image and his own likeness. Some may say, All right, so tell me this thing. Who was he talking to when he said, Let us make man in our image? Was he talking to himself? Yeah, he was talking to himself and all the messengers and the elders. Remember. You're making it seem as if Yahuwah is in heaven right now by himself. Weren't there messengers with him? 
Did he made the messengers and the 24 elders that sit around the throne? Doesn't the elders look like man? When you listen to, when you read Revelation, it tells you about the elders. Also the four living creatures. It says one of the living creatures are all of them. One of them had the face of a man. And on the face of a lion and on the face of something else. So if you read it and understand it, he was speaking to all these heavenly beings. It says, let us make man in our image. And he was also speaking to himself, all his power, all his being. But you don't understand this because you don't understand the foundation. You're not being humble enough to seek Yahuwah. You're limiting Yahuwah, and this is being done by the deception of the enemy. No, something has happened. When he created man, the breath into his nostril, placed him in the garden to watch over the garden, something took place. What took place? They broke the commandment. The serpent showed up. They broke the commandment and all that stuff. What happened after they broke the command? Verse 8. Let's read it. Let me highlight this so you can see. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard what? They heard Yahuwah. They heard his voice walking in the garden. Yahuwah was doing what? Some people say, oh, that's not literal. He was literally walking. His wife was listening. They don't simply heard his voice coming. <laughs> Again, you're limiting Yahoo because you don't understand foundation. Remember, it says that he tabernacled among us. He tabernacled among his own. That's what he always wanted to do. Why do you think we keep the feast of tabernacles? Remember, these things are a shadow of wonderful things to come. He's showing us that when he returns, he's going to tabernacle with us. Go read Revelation 22. It says that we will see Yahuwah with face to face. His name will be on our foreheads. That's what Yahuwah always wanted from the beginning. He wanted to tabernacle with us, walk with us, talk with us. Remember, it says that Anuk, he did what? He walked with Yahuwah. He was taken up. Come on, stop limiting Yahuwah. They heard his voice walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his woman hid themselves from the prison of Yahuwah amongst the tree of the garden. Why were they able to hear this and see this and walk with Yahuwah? Because when Yahuwah made him, remember he said, let us make in our image, our likeness. They were made like Yahuwah in a way. And we just read where it says that we shall become sons of Yahuwah to regain back authority and power. And the renewed earth that we're going to be in and the renewed heaven, we're going to see him face to face this time. He's going to put us back to how he made Adam, where we can see him, walk with him, talk with him. The same way Adam did when they were in the garden, the same way Enoch did, or Hanuk. That's what he's going to do at the end. Of all of this, he's going to make us see him face to face and have a relationship. I mean, which father would not want to have a, that type of relationship with his son? To walk with his son, talk with his son, be with his son. That's what he wants. It's that simple. Stop making a big deal out of this because you want to believe in this Trinity or Trinity because your little mind cannot understand the things of Yah. That's what Yahuwah says. My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As far as the heaven is from the earth, that's how far my thought is from you. What is Yahuwah trying to say? You are not all knowing. You cannot know everything. We are, we don't have the mind like Yahuwah. We don't have the power, the authority, nothing of Yahuwah. No messenger, no being on earth has that. So if you continue to limit Yahuwah, you will never see this. Now let's jump to another favorite or popular script, Barak Yahuwah. Let's go to the book of Yasha Yahu, Isaiah, and we're going to read chapter 43. There's a lot of reading. There's a lot of scriptural proofs that I can share with you. I'm going to share them in the in the descriptions. If we can't go through all of them right now, I'm going to share them in the descriptions, but we'll try our best to go through most of them. And then I'll get to the name and show you the breakdown of his name. 
Yasha Yahu or Isaiah. Yasha Yahu. All right, let me show you proof again to the Yah. Let's go to Psalms before we head there. Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing unto Allah. Sing praises to his name. Not names. Exalt him. Him that rise upon the heavens by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. Wow. Let's head back to Isaiah. So there you go. Psalm 68, 4. Let's go to Yashayahu 43. We're going to read all the verses going down. Verse 1. Listen, verse 1. But no, but no, thus says Yahuwah that created you. Not Yahusha. Yahusha did not create the heavens and the earth. Yahusha did not create everything. Because that's what you're saying if you believe that nonsense. Know this. Know that this says Yahusha. Know thus says Yahuwah that created you, O Yahweh, or Jacob. And he that formed you, O Yasharal. Fear not. For I have redeemed you. Wait. This should be his son. Isn't, the, isn't his son the one that, that redeems everyone, that redeems us? But he's saying, he, I have called you by my name, by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There you go, proof. This is not just found in the renewed covenant. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. Didn't we see proof to this? Yes, we did with the three Hebrew meals, or as they call them, Hebrew boys. Because they did not bow to the image, they did not worship Nebuchadnezzar. They were thrown into the fiery furnace. Now, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, what happened? It says that they, the king... They saw a fourth person. And the king also asked, didn't we throw three persons into the fire? And, and he said, yes, we did. And he says, then tell me something. Why do I see a fourth person in the fire with them? One who clothed and looked like the son of man. He said he saw a fourth person in the fire with the three person that he threw in there. Only three. And then you got to ask, no. Why are they still standing? Why are they walking around? Why does it seem as if it's like it's winter in there? Like they're having a chill time. They're relaxing. They're talking. And they're in the middle. It says that the fire burns so hot. The, the, the king, they made the fire so hot that even the guards that were placing them in it, one of them got killed by the heat of the fire, by the flames. They were lighting this fire, making it so strong and hot that even the guards that were on the outside got destroyed by this fire. So immediately, as soon as they walked in, they should have died. But they were standing in there with someone else. Isaiah, here it is. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle upon you. Now, when they came out, when the king brought them out, three came out. Did any of their clothes was burned? No. Well, did they smell like smoke? No. The king was amazed. He was surprised as how is it possible for you guys to be in fire and your clothes was not scorched, burned, nothing. You don't smell like smoke. I mean, they probably look even better when they came out. It's like when it's like a ghoul being refined by the fire. They probably look even better. He's probably shocked. Here it is, Isaiah for the chief. You walk through the fire, he's going to be there with us. He told them this. Were the three Hebrew boys off Yaakov, off Yasharan? Yeah, they were. This is a promise that he made. When they passed through the waters, when this took place, in the times of Masha, they passed through waters. He was there. Why do we limit Yahuwah? I don't understand this then yet you want to see Yahuwah's fullness in your life, and yet you limit Yahuwah by not understanding this. Verse 3 says, For I am Yahuwah, Allah Heka, 
the Kadash one, the separated, the called out one of Yashara. Your redeemer, your deliverer. Not this word. I gave Mitzrayim for your ransom, Kush and Haba for you. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honorable and I have loved you. Therefore, will I give man for you and people for your life. Fear not, I am with you. I will bring your seed from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give up to the south. So keep not back, do not keep back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the end of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my esteem. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. This is Yahuwah. This is not Yahusha talking. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Now, how can blind people have eyes and deaf have ears? <laughs> Again, they still don't understand. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. He loves the assembly of his people. Let's see. That's why he says, do not forsake the assembling of his saints, of his believers, of his kadashim, his called out ones. He gave us his command, do not forsake the assembling of the, the, the believers. Who among them can declare this? Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be rightly judged or let them hear and say it is true. Now listen to these two verses, few verses. You are my witnesses, says Yahuwah, and my servant who I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. He who? Yahusha. This is a prophecy. You ever wonder why Isaiah was Hebrew name was Yasha Yahu? The exact word that we simply put together to bring the name Yahusha. I mean, look at it. Out of all the prophets, look at his name. Very similar to the name Yahush. And he's the one that prophesies a lot about Yahush. Other prophets did this. Even in the Torah. You may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no all form. He is the only one. There is none form before him. He is the creator. He is the beginning. Neither shall there be after me. He is the end. So, he's the beginning, he's the first, he's the last. He says this, he's the Aleph and the Ta, the Aleph and the Ta. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. This in verse 11. I, even I, am Yahuwah, and beside me there is no deliverer, no redeemer. No, if his son was beside him from the beginning, why would he reject or denounce his own son? Like, who would do that? Someone comes and knocks at my door. Good day, sir. Or whatever. Or Salak Yahoo. How are you? Pleasant greeting to see you, whatever the case may be. Um, such and such and such, yada, yada, yada. Are you here by yourself? Or let's say a woman comes up and asks for this. Are you here by yourself? Are you here alone? Oh, yes, I'm here alone. I have no one with me. And my wife is right here. How would that seem to her? I'm denouncing her right in front of her. How would you feel if someone did this to you? So if Yahushua is a separate being, why would his own father denounce him right in front of him? He says, before him there was no all, there was no power for him. Neither shall there be after him. Again, if Yahusha is a separate being, which means after a certain time, Yahusha should take over from his father because that's how we understand the world, how it works. After a certain time, the father will get old, the father retires or he dies, and then the son claims the throne. So that's what most believe. Then. That's what you believe, that after, because if you can use scriptures to say Matthew 28, verse 9, verse 18 to 20, especially verse 18, where it says, 
all power, all authority has been given unto me. So why are you saying that? Are you saying that Yahush, Yahuwah is going to retire? He's going to go on vacation or he's going to die? He does said before him there was no all, neither shall there be after him. He's the beginning and the end. He's the only one. Beside him, there's no other. There's no deliverer. If his son is the deliverer, because that's what Yahusha means, and if Yahusha is a separate being, why would he not tell them that Yahusha, his son, he is delivered? Beside me is my son, Yahusha, the deliverer of Yahshua. He's telling you that he is. You need to understand that he is the one. I am he. We saw this in the book of John as well, where Yahusha said this. Yahusha says, I am he. Understand that I am he. Now he's saying it here in Isaiah, I am he. Yahusha was literally telling these people in his time that he is Yahuwah. But so many find it hard to believe. The same way so many find it hard to believe today. That Yahusha is Yahuwah. Yahuwah is Yahusha. You will also use scriptures to say, all right, but. Listen to what he said. He says, sit on my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool. Yahusha is the right hand of Yahuwah. Jesus simply took one body part and made it, took the spirit, the power from there, and made it a human being. Made it in his image. They beheld Yahuwah's image. The only way Yahuwah could come and talk with us in this form, in this crime of war, because the state that we're in today, no, we have been corrupted. If we were in the state like Adam was and Enoch was, then he could have easily walked with us and came here and talked with us and shown his face. But he could not do this with Masha and so many others. Why? Because they were fleshly. They were corrupted. If they had seen him, they would have died. So guess what? He had to come in the image and the form that he made us in to walk with us, to talk with us, to teach us, to do something that the Torah could not do by itself. The Torah could not get us to obey. The Torah could not help us to understand things. He had to do that himself. He tried with his prophecies, tried with his leaders, but it did not work. So he came himself to do it. He said it is impossible for the bloods of bullock and goats to wash away all the crimes of Yashara, of all the people. He also said this in the Torah as well, in the prophets as well. In the Renewed Covenant, this is said, and in also the Torah. So that means the only blood that could do this then, that could ransom us, buy us, purchase us, would be his. His pure Kadash blood. So again, I would ask the question, if his son is beside him, why would he say his son is not beside him? Why would he say the one who is the one that is supposed to deliver us, why would he denounce it? Then that means Yahuwah is a liar right here. This in verse 12. I have declared and I have redeemed. I have showed when there was no strange Allah among you or Allahim, mighty ones, among you. Therefore you are my witnesses, says Yahuwah, that I am Al. Power. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? There is none that can deliver out of his hand. Yahusha is the right hand of Yahuwah. Thus says Yahuwah, your redeemer, your deliverer. Not Yahusha. Not a separate being, rather, because Yahusha is Yahu. The Kadash one of Yasharal. For your sake, I have sent to Babal, and I have and I've brought on all your nobles, the Kashdim who cries in the ships. I am Yahuwah, your Kadash one, the creator of Yasharal, your king. If you go down to verse 25. I, even I, am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake and will not remember your crimes. Now, if you go to Exodus, or Shamut, Shamut 23, Exodus 23, 
let's go down past let's go down to about verse 19 all right verse 20 rather verse 20 and read and verse 21 let's read what this says because this may sound familiar to you guys Behold, I send a messenger, a malach, before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice before him not, for he will not pardon, blot out your transgression, for my name is in. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Man. So if right here in Isaiah, in the Renew Covenant, you see where it ties up. In Genesis and the Renew Covenant, you see where it ties up. This is why you don't understand, because you're only reading the Renew Covenant only. Plus, you're mostly reading in English. If you only read this in English, then you will not truly understand what he is saying. It will be misinterpreted, and you will get the scriptures, you will get the story, you will get the facts all twisted. You need to understand true. You need to understand the foundation. No, you may be saying, well, that's the only place that it says it in Isaiah. Let's go to Husha. Barak Yahuwah. Let's go to another um, prophet. It's, it's not uh, a major one, as they would say, but you know, they would say a minor one, but nevertheless, still a prophet. 13 verse 4. Listen to this. Let me highlight it so you all can see it. Yet I am Yahuwah Aleika from the land of Mizraim, and you shall know, you shall know no Allah but me, for there is no redeemer beside me. This is Husha. That's Husha, everyone, that's saying that. That's Husha saying that. Let's go to another one, even though some may not want to read this. But let's go to Ecclesiasticus. Some may not want to read this because they they may be saying, "Oh, this is this is one of those things that we should stay away from, or whatever." No, it's not. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus twenty-four, verse twenty-four, and listen to this, everyone. Faint not to be strong in Yahuwah, that He may confirm you. Leave unto him for Yahuwah Zabahot, Yahuwah of hosts, Yahuwah of armies. Is Yahuwah alone? Is Allah alone? Yahuwah Zabahot is Allah, mighty one, alone. And beside him there is no redeemer. Do you hear that, everyone? Let's go to the Renew Covenant now. Let's go into some renewed covenants and let's see what it reads. Let's go to John or Yahuanan, chapter 14, verse 7 to 10. Umamu Yahuwah. We're getting into some proof. 14, 7 to 10. Now listen to this. <laughs> and we all know this verse, right? Rock Yahuwah. You should all know this verse. You all know this right here. No, verse 7 says, all right, Yahusha says right here in verse 6. Sorry, verse 6. Yahusha said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, you, are, you know him and have seen him. What? How could they have seen Yahuwah if he is in heaven? He said, if you have known me, Yahushua, this is Yahushua speaking. That's why I started at verse 6. He said, if you had known me, you should have also known my father. And he says, guess what? You know what? From now on, from here on, you have known him and have seen him. How could they have seen and known Yahuwah when he's in heaven? And this is Yahushua, the son, that they're talking to. Think about it, everyone. Use your heads. Come on, we've been given our minds for a reason. Let's use it wisely. Verse 8, Philip said unto him, Adonai, Master, my Master, show us the Father, and it suffices us. It will be enough for us. This will be enough to believe. Listen to what Yahushua said. 
Listen to what Yahusha said. Yahusha said unto him, Have I been so long a time with you, and you have not yet known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say then, show us the Father? I'm right here. He's saying, Philip, I'm right here. I am the Father. I am the Father in the flesh. This is how you can talk to me physically. See me with your bodily eyes and not die. Philip said, show us the Father. Show us Yahuwah. And Yahusha says, have I been with you so long that you don't recognize me, Philip? And have yet not known me, Philip? Once you see me, you have seen Yahuwah. You have seen the Father. Or he didn't say, show us the Father. Then he said this in verse 10. Believe you not that I am the Father? It would end right there. But it can still read that way. I am in the Father. Because remember, this is his right hand. His right hand is attached to Yahuwah. The power from his right hand, that's what left and came to earth to be in this body. So he is in the Father. So you can read it that way. I am in the Father. Or you can read it this way. I am the Father. And the Father is me, or in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He does the works. So right here, you should have looked at it and said, wait, what was Yahushua saying right here? Why, why would he consider himself to be Yahuwah? This is why in Matthew, they found a perfect reason to crucify Yahusha because they were saying, blasphemy, blasphemy. This one commits blasphemy. What did Yahusha did? Why they said that. He claimed to be Yahuwah. No man on earth can do that and live and supposed to live. If anyone blasphemes Yahuwah like that, you should be stoned to death. Anyone who tries to say they are Yahuwah in the old, the old time days, you would have been stoned to death. You cannot blaspheme Yahuwah like that. So that's why they said it like that. Blasphemy, blasphemy. This one commits blasphemy. Here we have enough proof. Why do we need to hear anything more? Go read Matthew 26 and you'll see this for yourself. He was letting the people know at that time he was the father. Now you want more proof? Let's go to 1 Corinthians because I already gave you some Torah and, 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 and prophets. Read Genesis. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12 and read verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the rule of Yahuwah can call Yahusha a curse. If you claim to say that you have the spirit of Yahuwah, the rule Achadash of Yahuwah, the Kaldo spirit of Yahuwah, you cannot say Yahusha is a curse. Thing. You cannot say Yahusha is false. You cannot do this. If you truly have the power and the rule of Yahuwah, you would know who he is. Proof? Let's continue. And that no man, no man, no man, absolutely no man on earth can say that Yahuwah is Yahusha. Some will stop right there. Stop, there it is, see? See, it says that no one can say that Yahuwah is Yahusha. That's what you're doing. You cannot say that. You cannot say, wait, it's not finished. But by the Ruach Kadash, except only by the Ruach Kadash, no man can say that Yahuwah is Yahusha except by the Ruach Kadash. The only way you can say this and know this is because of the rule Akadash. Only we can know this is the rule has to reveal it to you. The rule has to reveal this to you. Let's go to Luke, Luke 10, verse 22. Let's see something what Yahusha said. This is what Yahusha said. Luke 10, verse 22. Umamu Yahuwah. Listen to this. All things are delivered to me of my father. And no man knows. No man knows who the son is. No man knows who the son is. <coughs> Sorry. But the father. And who the father is. But the son. And he to whom the son will reveal him. No, what is it saying? In the book of Matthew, Peter and Yahushua was having a conversation. He was telling him, you know, who people say he was. 
And he was, he was, you know, Yahusha asked him, who do people say I am? Some say you are Ali Yahu, the prophet. Some say you're this, some say you're that. Then Yahusha looked at Philip and asked him, who do you say that I am? And he says that you are the living Allah. But in the English, they would put it as, you are the son of Allah and all that nonsense. That's what they would put it as. In the English, it would say that you are the son of the living Allah. But we know that that would not be the case now that we have this understanding of the truth. So it had to be someone else. It had to be someone else. Because if we understand, know that he is, you know what, let's go there and let's read it. Let's, let's, let's read this. Matthew 16. Let's go to the book of Matthew and let's read this. Even though it's really popular, we, uh, you all know what I'm talking about. And no way am I adding to this. But so, well, let's go there to read it because I don't want anyone to leave and think anything else. So, okay, well, let's go there. All right, so verse 13. When Yahusha came into the coast of Kar. Qua, Qua Karya Philippi, he asked his Salamadeen, saying, Who do people say that the son of Adam am? And they said, Some say that you are Yahuanan the Mercer, some say you are Ali Yahu, and others, Yarma or Yaram Yahu, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say you that I am? And Kapa. Peter answered and said unto him, You are Hamashiach, the son of the living Alua. Now listen to what he answered and he said. Listen what, to what he answered, he said. And Yahusha answered and said unto him, Baruch, exalted, respected are you rather, Simeon, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. No, after reading 1 Corinthians, 12 verse 3 and reading um, Luke no one knows who the son is but the father and who the father is but the son and whom the son reveals it to it says the only way can you say that Yahuwah is Yahusha is if the rule reveals it to you um, Yahusha has said right here to Philip it says that flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my father which is in heaven it means that his Ruach Adash told Peter who he was revealed it who he was so let's read this verse right here, verse 16, properly now with this understanding. Let's remove all the misconceptions and all the foolishness, the errors. And let's read this again with this understanding. No, Simon Kappa, Peter answered and said, You are Amashiach, the Messiah, the living Yah. The living Yah. You can remove some. You can keep it there if you want, but you can remove some. You are the living Yah. That's why he said, flesh and blood not reveal to you, only my father. Because again, in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, it says the only way that anyone can say this is if the rule. The only way anyone can say is if the rule reveals it unto them. So that means how Kapa knew this. That means the rule revealed it unto him. The rule told him who Yahusha was. He wasn't any regular human being. It, let's go to another place where this is sold. This is written like 1 Corinthians 12. And I'm going to show you this again. Let's go to because this is not only said in the Torah and the prophets, but even in the Renewed Covenant, if you read this with a proper understanding, Let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verse 10 to 11. Philippians 2. This is another popular verse as well. Popular verse. So it says that at the name of Yahusha, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth. And that every tongue, every tongue should confess that Yahuwah 
is Yahusha Amashia to the esteem of Yah the Father. Every tongue should confess this. But if you don't confess this, if you believe it's a Trinity, guess what? You are confessing a lie. You are believing a lie. And this is why Yahuwah says many are called, but few are chosen. Because only few choose to believe these things. Only few choose to believe and know when the Shabbat truly is, when the day truly begins. Not at sunrise, not following the moon, but at evening in the middle of daylight and darkness, in the middle of light and darkness. Evening comes first. Darkness comes first. Darkness was created by Yahuwah. Go check out the video that I did on that. The first thing that was created was the heaven and earth, and darkness was a part of that. Some people, you ask them, what was the first thing that was created? It will tell you that light. You want me to show you proof? Let's go to, let's go to Google to show you this proof. Let me share the screen. Barak Yahuwah. Then I'll get into the name shortly, right after this. All right, what was created on the first day? All right, let's say each day. I was created on each day. The first day, light was created. The second day, the sky. So you see, they are literally telling you the first day, what was created on the first day? It says that light. And if you go some other places, it will say the same thing. G.O.D. created light in the darkness the first day. Many places it will say it like this. And this is what we were told. Some places it will say, day one, he created the heavens and the earth. But in most, again, as you can see, Bible Keeper, the first day of creation, light. So as you can see, most of it is saying light, light, light. So that's why some people understand or have this belief that light was the first thing that was created, but it was not. It was not created before darkness. Darkness was a part of his creation. You want to see proof? Let me go there real quick. Not, leaving, not just going astray, but I'm just trying to show you guys the misconception because we read from the wrong understanding. Let's go to Jubilee too. This is where the messenger of the present is breaking down everything that was created. And it says, for on the first day, he created the heavens, which are above, and the earth and the waters and all the ruhut which serve before him, the messengers of the presence and the messengers of sanctification, the messengers of rule of fire, the messengers of the rule of the winds, the messengers of the rule of the clouds and of darkness and of snow and of hail and of pour and frost and messengers of the voice and of thunders and of the lightning and of the messengers of the ruhu of spirits, of cold, and of heat, and of winter, and of spring, and of autumn. All these messengers, he created the abysses and the darkness, evening and night, and the light, dawn, daylight, which he has appeared. So you see, he created darkness. Some people say that he did not create this. He created it. He created everything. So why are you still limiting or taking all things of the scriptures? Stop doing that. The reason for this is because you don't have a solid foundation. You don't have a foundation in the truth. You don't understand the beginning. It's like watching a movie at the end of the movie and trying to explain what took place in the movie or trying to understand the movie. You're going to only be left with an assumption of what took place in the beginning. The only way can you understand the whole movie that what happened, why did this guy um, left his woman to be with this girl, or why did he have to kill this guy, or why did this happen? Based on how the movie is ending, it may seem as if that guy or that person is wicked, but if you go back to the start of it, then you realize that that's not the wicked one, it's the other person that's the wicked one. And that's why he left that person, or that's why he killed that person. So the one who you thought was guilty, was wrong, was actually the innocent one. But if you only watch the movie from the end, that's how it will seem. The innocent one will seem guilty, and the guilty one will be seen innocent. That's what Hashatan has done to us. He has made us watch, read, and understand the Bible, the scriptures, from the end. 
That's wrong. How can we understand the scriptures from the end? You got to start from the beginning. Understand the scriptures from the beginning, then go to the end. Then you will understand the whole movie. Then you will understand the whole Bible, the whole story. Then you can properly make a sound, clear decision. So the problem today is most people are too reliant on this English language. You are not reading from a Hebrew prospect. This is what I mean. This is the Hebrew language right here on the screen. This is called the Yod or the Yad. This is called the Hey, man with his arms raised. As again, as I said, I've done teachings on the channel regarding this. It's called learning, learning Aborit or learning Aborit, Asian Hebrew. Part one, part two, part three, four, five, six. Sorry, I've not been able to upload any this past the four. Didn't have any electric city for a few days, didn't have any power. So that's why I was unable to upload any. But Rock Yahoo, yeah, willing, I will upload um day four, WD, the same time, five o'clock, um, or six for your seven, whatever time it is for yours, because of this time zone. We're all in different places, so it may be a different time for you. But it'll be the same time that I always upload on that day. I'll upload the word, the words in the Hebrew, like names and all these things. I'll break down some more of um, some words, some names, and all these things so you can understand. We'll even dive into Ahaya Ashar Ahaya to show you what it truly means. So definitely look out for that one, Rumamu Yahuwah. So, continuing to this right here, this is the picture. Want to learn more? Go check that out so you can understand. This is a, this would be transliterated to a Y, not translated. You also want to learn the difference between translation, transliteration, also transmogrification. You got to go to the video that I did again on the channel where I showed the difference between these two. So, this is the transliteration of this letter in this language this is why it would be in our english language today a y Aborit hebrew reads from right going across to the left so it's y this one is an h no this being the first letter it makes a ya song with the hey ya so you have the name ya 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 now how do we get the 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 who on it? Yahoo. You got to add the wa. Sorry, not now. The wa. That, that's what the wa looks like. You got to add the wa. So with the wa on it, this would be in English, a you. See that? That would be a you. So here we have Y H U H. So this right here would be ya. So put the U right here, you will get what? Yahoo. What does Yahoo mean? Ya adds. Ya adds. Ya adds. No, if you put any word behind that, that's what he adds. If he adds power, then you put Yahoo uh, or Yahoo something which ties to power. Just as so you put ya adds deliverance, you would put instead of putting the word yasha, yahoo yasha, you already have ya in the name. So you would move the ya on this part of the yasha. Move the ya and you all put the sha. Yahoo sha means ya as deliverance. Still the same person. Ya as deliverance. Ya u a. Sorry. H. Ya u a ya ad spread. Ya sha ya u deliverance is added of ya. Ya ram ya hu. Hold on. Hold on. Ya ram ya hu are yarma. This way. Yarma ya hu. Exaltation is added of Yah. Still the same person. The Yah does not change. It's still speaking to one person. 
So the reason why you don't understand is because you're only focused on this part. You're not focused on this part. What does this mean? What is the translation? Let me show you what I'm trying to see. We go back to the screen. I use this, this app called SKJV. This is the symbol of it. This is what it looks like. I'll, I'll, let me show you real quick. Uh, where is it? Right here. So this is the app that I use. It's called the SKJV. Um, hopefully you can see this symbol clearly. You can download this beautiful app. Breaks down the, the, the words in the Hebrew and the, the English. Bring them back to the Hebrew. Like, let me show you. For example, the word for earth. You click on it. As you can see, all the all the words in Hebrew that they have in in the Strong's, they have it underlined and a bit highlighted. So you can click on earth. Now it'll take you to the word. Then you got here, you got some modern Hebrew. This is the Aleph. This is the Rosh. And this is the Zada or the Zad. So this would be Aratz, Aratz. The Hebrew word for earth is Aratz. It is strong number eight, H776, I believe. The Hebrew word is Aratz. Now G-O-D, as you can see, the Aleph, the Lamad, the He, the Wa, the Ma'im, Alahim, Alahim, which means Mighty ones, it is the plural of this. The Aleph, the Lamad, the Wa, and the A, which means Alua, which is a single term to mean a mighty one. Not this word. This word also is the name of a mighty one as well. His name would be D E I O S R O U S. So this word is derived from the pagan mighty one's name. Yeshai used to say it, but he stopped because he researched and found out that it's still a, a pig and mighty one's name. That's why we say mighty one. Mighty one is not tied to anyone's name. So you can see it's from Al, which means strength, as I told you. It means strength or mighty, almighty, power, strong, strong authority. So if you read and study the scriptures like this, understanding what these light means or what these words mean, where are these words from? What was the original word in Hebrew? Beginning, as you can see, Rashid. Rashid is the word for beginning. So the ba before it makes it in beginning, not in the beginning. We got the word for heaven, Shamaim. Shamaim. Heaven, our sky, our opening above water. Look at created, it would be bara, 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 which means to create. So this is how you got to study everyone. You got to look at these words in the Hebrew tongue. Some persons will even say the word for darkness was ra, which means evil, because you only use this part, but it says it's from this number. This is H2822, but it's from H2821. This says it means this is Hushak or Hosha, but in the Hebrew it is Hasha, and I'm going to show you proof. Now, right here it says the dark hence literally darkness, figuratively, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness, darkness, night. But it says literally darkness, figuratively, misery, destruction, death. Because death, misery, and all these things, these things are seen as, you know, darkness. Man, there's darkness in your days coming, which means there's death, there's misery coming in your days. And if you go back to the word that's from, no, you see, ha shop, no, oh, there's no e. And it means a primitive root to be dark as with holding light, transitively to be dark and black, be black, be make dark, dark and cause dark and be dim. It does not mean evil. The word for evil would be ra. That's what the word for evil would be. The word light would be or the word day right here, yom, and all these things. If you go back and understand this, then you will get the better understanding of what these things should be. The word morning right here, it should be bakar, but they put boker down as the break of the during the morning early. Well, morning is the word from Morgan, bakar, break forth, inspect, admire, care, make search. So it should be bakar, but they put morning. So all these things you got to study to understand what is the Hebrew word 
for these words. Firmament, rakia. Rakia. Rakia, which means an expanse. That is the firmament, a visible arc of the sky. From this word, raqwa, the expanse. So you got to research in order to find back the original written words, the original written meanings. But if you only read it like this, like with not clicking on these words, not checking what these words are in Hebrew, then you only see it for what it is, what the translators made it see, not what Yahuwah made it to be. So this is what I'm talking about, everyone, that you need to understand, that you need to research, that you need to check, verify you need to verify these English words, these translations. Are we reading the pure tongue? Are we reading what Yahuwah made it to be? Are we reading exactly what it should have been? Let's go to the final book again to show proof to this. Another place that you can show proof, again, the Shama. Deuteronomy 6, and it reads, Now these are the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which Yahuwah Allah commanded to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it, that you might fear Yahuwah Allah So guard all his statutes and his commandments. Why would he tell you to guard them? Because the enemy is going to try to pervert them. He's going to try to get you not to keep them, not to do them. Which I command you, you and your son and your son's son all the days of your life that your days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Yashara, and guard to do it, that it may be well with you, that you may increase mightily as Yahuwah Alua of your fathers has promised you in the land that flows with milk and honey. Shama, O Yashara, Yahuwah Alahenu, Yahuwah Ahad, here are guard, guard, Yashara, Yahuwah, your power, our power, Yahuwah, our mighty one, rather, Yahuwah, our mighty one. Yahuwah is one. First thing that he says, Yahuwah is one. First thing that he says, Yahuwah is one. Yahuwah is one. Before he said anything else, he said Yahuwah is one. No, with that understanding, he said, you know, you shall love Yahuwah Alaika with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all these things. Now, if we should go to Matthew, final book that I'm getting to, final thing that I'm going over, that we're true. If we should get to the book of Matthew, Matthew 22, Barak Yahuwah, and go all the way down to verse 36. Let's see if we can get there quick. All right. So one of them came to him. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the greatest, the great commandment in the Torah, in the Torah? Yahusha said unto him, listen to this, everyone. Yahusha said unto him, you shall love Yahuwah Aleika with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. He is reminding him of the Torah. He's reminding him of the Shama. So you see, again, you cannot throw out the renewed covenant because he quoted from there. So if you want to throw away the renewed covenant, then guess what? For those who are doing this, I'm not talking about everyone. For those who are saying Yahusha is false and he's another being and, and the, the renewed covenant is false, Paul is false and all these things, throw it away. Then guess what? Why would he quote from it? Then guess what? You got to throw that away as well. You got to throw away the, the, the Shama. Throw it away as well. Because that's where he's quoting from. I just shown you proof. The reason why it seems that way is because of the translators. They are the ones that twisted the scriptures. They are the ones that made it seem as if Yahuwah, Yahusha rather, is another beat. If you go to Mark, 
book of Mark, he repeats this. Again, it's repeated. Let's go down to verse 28, I believe it should be. Verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reason together, perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, he perceived that he answered, Yahushua answered them well, he asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Yahushua answered him, the first of all the commandments is this, hear, O Yahshua, Yahuwah Allah Yahuwah is one. And you shall love, and you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your soul. Again, he's going back to what? The Shama, the Torah. And the first thing that he said, Yahuwah is one. He's telling us to guard this. Why? Because Yahuwah saw that this was not going to be the keys to deed. So many people are going to give in to polytheism and believing in many mighty ones, the belief of many mighty ones, instead of the belief of one mighty one, one true being, one true power, one true creator. Yahuwah said he is one. Again, Hashatan being the opposer, if Yahuwah says one, Hashatan is going to tell you 1.5, he's going to tell you two. He's not going to say one. He will tell you any number but one. He will tell you even zero. That's why you got some people that don't believe in the creator because Hashatan, instead of telling them one or two or three, he told them zero. There's none. Don't believe in it. So you see how much our minds, our hearts are being influenced by this world. That's why in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, what did Sha'al say? What did the Apostle Paul said? He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to unlearn to relearn. So, again, look into it. Look into all the religions of the world today. All believe in this trinity, this father, this son, or trinity. Some believe in trinity. That there's a father and son um, being, and the two are separate, but also kind of one, a hard unit. They mean united, because some who say that they believe this, they believe they are united together. The same way a man and a woman is one. The same way a man and a woman are two separate beings, but when they come together, they come together as one, but they are two fleshly separate beings. That's how some people see um, the Father and the Son and the Spirit, they would see. Now, I've heard persons break it down like that. But is that what Yahweh is saying? No. In the Torah, he made that clear. In the prophets, he made that clear. And also in the Renewed Covenant, if you search and read it properly, you will see that it's still makes it clear there. Now, are you going to use a few scriptures that is clearly wrong, which you have no proof to show that your scriptures are rightly judged? Because nowhere in the Torah can you find, nowhere in the Torah, in Barashid, Gen in Barashid, or Genesis rather, Deuteronomy, Exodus, Leviticus, nowhere in the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Whoever, nowhere in the first covenant can you find any evidence, scriptural proof to show that Yahusha is a separate being, that Yahusha is another being that was created, that he shall deliver Yah Yasharal. Because Yahuwah, as we just showed in Isaiah, he said he is the deliverer. There is no deliverer beside him. There is no support to the Trinity. There is no support to the Trinity. So again, which would you choose to believe? A few scriptures or many scriptures that says this? Who do you think the judge will believe? You got one witness or two witnesses that says, oh yeah, you were at home. But then another person got multiple witnesses that says you weren't at home. Plus video evidence to show that you weren't at home. Who do you think the judge is going to believe? Your two friends are too strange that you could have paid to lie in court? Are two family members that's trying to cover up for you? Or is the judge going to believe some witnesses plus video witnesses, audio witnesses, GPS witness, and all these witnesses? Who do you think the judge is going to pick side? Which would be proof? Which would you consider to be proof? Judge wisely, everyone. Be not deceived anymore into this nonsense, into this foolishness. 
But if you so choose to, because still at the end of this day, many won't even watch the entire video right now. Many won't even watch the videos that we did. Some have already sub unsubscribed. Some have already looked the other way. I don't care. I will not stop saying this. Barak Yahuwah who is Yahusha. Yahuwah is Yahusha. Yahusha is Yahuwah. He is one. I will not stop saying this. I will not change my belief for anyone. I will not do that to please anyone. It will never change. It will always be the same until the day I die. As a matter of fact, I won't die. I'll be put to sleep and placed in the bosom of a bar. So the choice is yours. This is just to share with those who truly want to understand. I'm not forcing anyone to believe this. The choice is just to help people to see and understand the deceptions of this world. So you can come out of the lies, come out of mystery Babylon, come out of her, my people, as Yahuwah Yahusha says, and come into truth. Barak Yahuwah Yahusha. So, any questions, feel free to ask. If you are coming with any comments or any nonsense foolishness to push your belief, force your belief, whatever, don't even bother. As I said, it's simple. If you have a problem, if you feel a way disturbed, then go to Yahuwah. Go check out why you feel that way. Or if that's not your belief or whatever, it's simple. Go find an assembly or a teacher that will tickle your ear. You will not find those over here. You will not find any teacher, any preacher that will tickle your ear. Go look somewhere else. We tell you the hard truth. Nothing but the truth. The truth that will hurt your feelings. But your soul will be rejoicing. Because at the end of the day, your feeling is not going into paradise. Knowing the scripture that it says your feeling is going to go before Yahoo. It says that your soul will be judged. Your soul will be cast into paradise or into the pit. This flesh will always be hurt by the truth. When the truth is being said, you will feel very uncomfortable. You will feel as if this is not coming from Yahuwah, but it is. If your flesh is disturbed and bothered by it, that means it's the truth. That means it's something that you should be doing. So again, we will not water on the truth. This is not any joke. This is not any game. We will not pity anyone or any of that stuff. No, we will not show sympathy or pity to Hashatan. I heard Yeshai say this a long time ago. He said something that, that really opened up my eyes to a lot of things. And it's so true. He says we got to be careful when we are showing pity because we may be showing pity definitely to the enemy. If we think we're showing pity to the person because we're trying to feel sorry for them and their feelings and worry about their feelings, we are showing pity to the enemy who's controlling the flesh. Because remember, it says the flesh warred against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. When you're in Yahuwah, you war against your flesh. When you're outside of Yahuwah, you war against the spirit. What does that mean? Being in Yahuwah, your spirit is trying to dominate. Your inner man, your love. But the fleshly man is wanting to go back into the world. The fleshly one wants to go back to the way it was. When you're in the world now, your flesh is dominating. But the rule, the spirit of Yahuwah is pulling you to righteousness. It's pulling you to truth. So always remember this, everyone. Rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You're warring against spirits that are controlling your flesh. And then you have the spirit, the cardinal spirit, that's controlling that, your inner man. That's pulling you to that side. Choose you today who you will serve. The flesh, Hashatan, the devil, the opposer, or Yahuwah, your inner man, the righteous. Ruma, Mu, Yahuwah. Barak, Yahuwah. I'll definitely share with some more scriptures in the descriptions that you can go and read. And as I say, go search this out for yourself. Go research these things. See if you are, you are still attached to the world by following this pagan belief. Then you make a decision. Then you decide. Many are called. Few are chosen. To everyone that has shown support, everyone that has liked, shared, subscribed, and supported this, this assembly, this ministry, this channel, 
we truly, truly and greatly appreciate you for that support is definitely needed and grateful for. We are thankful to Yahuwah, you know, for using each and every one of you to do this and for your obedience as well. And yet still, there is more to come. There's a lot more that we're going to do. There's a lot more that we want to get done towards Yahuwah, towards his kingdom. Rumamu Yahuwah. So definitely look forward, look out for that. Look out for the more things to come, not just teachings, but some other things that we should be doing as believers. That's not really being done a lot today. I'll go into another teaching, breaking down this as well for next Shabbat. But until then, you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your Shabbat, the rest of your week. This is Watchman Azar Yahoo signing out on behalf of Yahoo's chosen people assembly. And from every one of us, we love you all. We thank you. And we ask Yahuwah even now to shamar you, to guard you, and to rock you, to respect you in all your ways and all the works of your hands. Rumamu Yahuwah. Allah Huyah. Shabbat Shalom, beloved family. Rumamu Yahuwah. Allah Huyah. Rock Yahuwah, who is Yahusha. <laughs>